Okay, hello, young adult lovers. My name is Beth Sham. I am the chair of the 2020 Amelia Elizabeth Walden Award Committee. And on behalf of Alan and the entire Walden Award Committee, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the winner of this year's award, this wonderful book, Lovely War. And we just happen to have the author of Lovely War right here, Julie Berry, is joining me today. So congratulations, Julie. Thank you so much, Beth. And thank you for all the work that you and your committee members did. I, I can't begin to fathom what a, a sacrifice that was. And I just thank you for your time. It isn't a sacrifice at all. It's a labor of love. We all talk about how, how much we love this award and, and how special it is. So it's not it's not a sacrifice <laughs> um so first of all for those of, of you watching this uh, interview in the future it is 2020 so i would be remiss if i didn't ask you julie how is your quarantine going <laughs> <laughs> well i've lost all sense of time <laughs> i don't know what day it is i barely know what time it is things are fine i'm uh, here in my home in southern california my family's almost all with me i have one son on the east coast um, but everybody's healthy and we're finding ways to stay productive for the most part and keeping cabin fever at bay, I think. That's great. That's good to hear. So you spent a lot of time with this story, or I'm um, sorry, you spent a lot of time with this story and these characters in your head. And the it's such a complex story, but if you had to distill it down to a 30-second elevator speech, how would you describe Lovely War? Sure. So I describe it as two love stories set during World War I as told to us by Greek gods in a Manhattan hotel room in World War II. Uh, the first couple is a young British couple, a pianist and a would-be architect. The second couple is a Belgian refugee and an American uh, soldier, a member of the Harlem Hellfighters Regiment, who is a ragtime pianist. So those are the two couples and then uh, the, the chief narrator of our story is Aphrodite, the goddess of love, but she's joined by Ares, the god of war, uh, Apollo, the god of music and art, uh, Hephaestus, who's the god of forges and fires, and uh, Hades, lord of the underworld. Yeah, we we loved all of the different entry points that readers could could really latch on to with with this with this book. So um, the three main criteria for the Walden Award are widespread teen appeal, literary merit and a positive approach to life. And historical fiction can be such a hard sell sometimes to young readers. But one thing we all agreed in our discussions was how much young readers have been devouring this book in our classrooms and libraries. What do you attribute that too? Well, first of all, it's amazing to hear that, so that's wonderful. Um, I think it has a great cover and that might, you know, attract some readers and I, that's okay with me. Um, but I think that that combination of um, real history, the, the sort of compelling stories of, of what actually happened during this real part of our, our history and heritage, um, combined with, you know, a very romantic set of stories, um, and of course, there's a lot of danger and suspense when you're dealing with combat situations. So I think um, it, I, I tried really hard to keep the entertainment value very high while being as true as possible to the facts of the history. And, and I think that young readers appreciate both, not just an entertaining story, but I think they really appreciate the unvarnished truth. And I tried to present that to the best of my ability here. Yeah, that was one thing that, um, you know, stuck out to me was that this doesn't, this doesn't, this sort of defies genre and defies like age, age groups, um, because we felt like this could have actually also been a uh, marketed as adult fiction as well. So, you know, the not dumbing it down for young readers is what's something that we really appreciate. Well, thank you. To, to my mind, the, the distinction is kind of blurry anyway. I think, you know, I mean, obviously with the younger um, kids, there's, there's a question of reading ability and reading level, but I think teens that like fiction, um, you know, good story is a good story. So it gets kind of blurry. 
Yeah, for sure. So one of the reasons I've loved being part of the Walden Committee is that I feel like this award criteria, because it's so specific, it, it's really made to be used in the classroom. Um, and one of my frustrations in my own teaching career and being a school librarian is that I feel like uh, YA is often cast aside in favor of using classics and canonical literature that don't resonate with teen readers. So if you were sitting in like a school board, uh, you know, or had to sit in on like a department meeting with uh, English teachers, how would you make the case for using Lovely War in the classroom? Well, if we can pretend that I'm not the author of it so that I don't <laughs> seem like I'm just shamelessly shilling my own book, um, I, think I would say, <laughs> which I guess I am doing, um, I, I would say that it, it successfully brings together a lot of themes that are both historically true but but relevant today the things that teens can relate to things like um, you know violence and war propaganda and truth uh, you know racial violence and prejudice um, refugees the question of refugees the question of of you know um, cultures coming together um, romance you know coming together across different cultures um, so I think that you know it's got a lot of uh, contemporary themes, but it also gives a very human look at a period of history that um, you know. I, I think it's it's so important that we realize that the people that we learn about in history class were actual humans with real wants and, and needs and feelings, and, and so that's what I try to do in historical fiction is to really make those people come alive and make them people that readers are going to care about. So I think you know it, it's it's topical, it's timely, it's historical, um, it's mythological. It allows kids to have some fun with some of what they learned in, in classical mythology. Um, but then, at the end of the day, I hope it's just a really compelling read that kids will want to read. I imagine for English teachers, one real struggle is just finding something that kids will find gripping and that they'll actually finish. Um, that's been my struggle as a mom of teens, right? Yeah. Finding that that book they can't put down. Well, we couldn't put this book down, and I want to I want to end with one last question, which I you know feel like is the one that authors get all the time. They're they're probably used to it by now, which is what's next on the horizon for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have um, a middle grade novel coming out this fall called Wishes and Wellingtons, which I'm excited about, um, and uh, next spring uh, another picture book. But in terms of young adult readers, I decided to move just sort of a few years in time forward so just after world war one and look at some of the um, social political currents that were sweeping through europe in the aftermath of the russian revolution so you know we've got we've got the bolsheviks in in russia we've got communism and socialism and all kinds of you know workers um uh, movements and what was it like to be a young person sort of caught in the grips of that in those early post-war years so um, this one will be very romantic and a thriller of sorts as well well i'm already i'm already putting it on my to read list i don't know if it has a title yet but <laughs> i'm ready to read it <laughs> Thank you so um much. well Thank you so much, Julie. I am just, I'm so excited about all the new readers that will hopefully find their way to Lovely War as a result of it winning the Walden Award. So say, thank you for spending some time with us today. Thank you so much for recognizing Lovely War. I'm grateful.